Hello everybody. In this video lesson series we are going to cover basic and advanced ways a PHP programmer can search a MySQL database. Throughout the series we will show examples, discuss the programming logic, offer some free code, and then nearing the end of the series we're going to put it all together and build a search page for the world of webcraft.com so people can see how it is applied to a real world situation where we create an advanced site search page that allows filtering and things like that so you can have a smarter search engine on your site. And all of the code examples that we might be using in the various videos in this series are going to be housed at developphp.com and this whole series is going to be housed in the PHP and MySQL video section there at developphp.com. Okay, before we get started, let's briefly discuss what you will be learning and also what you will need in order to follow this series. So what you'll be learning in this series is HTML search forms and advanced search filter methods using HTML forms. You're going to learn various MySQL search query methods, join table queries targeting multiple tables, natural language full text search queries, Boolean full text search queries. And before you can begin with this series, there's three things you're going to need. One MySQL database created on your web server, successful connection to that MySQL database so you have to create the database on your server and successfully connect to it using a MySQL connect script and you have to make sure your server processes PHP okay just to make sure that we're all doing things exactly the same and nobody can cry about the scripts not working for them we're gonna supply you with a script that creates two tables and we're creating two tables that way we can show and demonstrate the joined table queries for searching now this script is going to be stored at developphp.com where this video is rendering so right under the video you will find this script where you can copy and paste but what happens is at first it creates one table called pages and that's for storing the site pages just an example table and we're going to put dummy data within that table and the second table is called blog and that's going to be for storing blog entries which is similar to the uh, pages table but it's just a little bit different and it's made for storing something else and so you can see after we successfully create each table that we're going to insert dummy data into the pages table here with this SQL query and then we're going to insert dummy data into the blog table here with this SQL query right here using these SQL commands and you can see that my SQL commands are wrapped up in a little block here and I'm going to expand those out and explain those to you in just a second but first I'm going to show it working make sure it works on my live server okay so now I've run that page and everything worked out right I connected successfully and it created my pages table created my blog table and it successfully populated dummy data into those tables now on the top of this file I went ahead and put the database version the MySQL database version that I'm using on my live web server which is 5.1.58 and my PHP version that I'm using on my live web server which is 5.2.17 Now the first thing that's happening in the script is we're forcing script errors and warnings to show during production only and we're putting in these lines just in case your php.any file or your PHP configuration is set to suppress errors and not show them this will force them to show then the next line is connect to your database here and what I'm using is a connect to mysql.php file which is an independent file that I can call on anytime within my website or application that I need to connect to that database but you can put your connection lines right in here if you're having problems including a connection script then you can just put your mysql connect script your lines however many lines it takes to connect to your mysql database usually it's two lines you can put them right there all I'm saying is just connect to your database right here no matter any way you want to do it and I have lessons at develop PHP that show how to connect to a MySQL database using the method that I'm using here I'm not going to be showing you guys my MySQL database connection strings because they're personal and private to me now that we have successful connection to our database we're going to create table one for storing the pages and let's go ahead and expand this out I'm going to highlight that block and show it to you now you can see the syntax and you'll be able to get your hands on this code and copy and paste all of it if you don't if you don't want to sit here and pause the video and type all of this you can just copy and paste it from the page of develop PHP which I will link to in this video in the description on the under the video 
So the syntax reads, which is all packed into a variable called SQL command, the SQL syntax reads create table called pages and in that table we're going to have the first field is ID, type is integer, it's unsigned, auto increment, not null, and it has the primary key. Then the next field going in is page title and that's going to store the page's titles. And that's going to be varchar 255, so the field type is varchar. 255 is the max. 255 is the max charge that can be in it. Page body, that's going to be the next field, and that's going to be a text type, and that can hold up to, I think, 10,000 characters or something like that. And then page views, that's going to be int type, not null, and we're going to stick a default value of zero for any items that may be put into this database table. And finally, we're setting a full text index on the page title field and the page body fields. So those two columns in the database table are going to have the full text index set upon them. And this is really only going to be necessary for when we go to demonstrate the full text type searches. For basic searching, it's not really necessary. And actually, if you have a whole lot of data in your database for very large result sets, MySQL recommends that you don't set your tables as full text before you put your data in it. They say you should put all your data in your database and then after all the data is inserted into the database then set your full text indexes on the page title and the page body whatever rows or, or whichever fields that you want to set full text index upon they say you should set it afterwards for tables that would have very large result sets a lot of information in them and you can do that using alter table syntax instead of create table you can use alter table and you can target the table that you want to alter and add full text indexes to anything for an existing table and then the last little bit is, is you set in the engine for the MySQL database table to my ISAM and more than likely your databases are already my ISAM type alright now let's close that one back up like it was and let's take a look at creating table 2 let's highlight that one open it up you'll see it's identical to the first one it's just a table called blog now but it's creating that table in the same way it's creating the first one giving it an ID instead of page title this one's called blog title but it's the same kind of field this one's called blog body instead of page body same kind of field this is called blog views instead of page views and it's the same kind of field as the other one and we're setting the full text index upon blog title and blog body and making sure the engine type is my ISAM Okay, so now you see the syntax needed for creating tables through script, and that's what these do. Now after that code successfully runs, you'll see two H3 tags. The first one will run. If, if there's any errors that occur, you'll see that through this MySQL error function. So the script will die, and this MySQL error function will fire off, telling you exactly what you did wrong. You can see in mine, when I ran mine on the browser live, I had nothing go wrong because I had no MySQL error output. All mine show with these H3 tags saying success creating pages table, success creating blog table, yada yada. I still have it up. There it is right there. See? So you can see I only I got these success echoes here to render because all of my queries happened successfully. If there was any errors in any of these queries and anything went wrong, these MySQL error functions would have fired off and the script will die at that point. Now we need the two queries and SQL commands to run to insert the dummy data. So let's highlight this one and I'll show you how I'm inserting dummy data into the pages table. So I'm inserting into pages, into the pages title and pages body, the values of all of these lines. You can see they're comma separated lines that throw in the title and they throw in the page body but this is how you can set it up for exercise purposes and really you can take away the blah 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 you, you can title these any way you want but I recommend you leave it exactly how it is because throughout the series I'm going to be targeting this data so once that query runs successfully then you get the h3 echo here that says success populating the pages table and then you do the exact same thing so in, insert into the blog table it's the same kind of deal Okay, so once you run this script, you're going to have two tables in your database, and they're going to have dummy data inserted into them that we can work with 
throughout this series now. So I'll see you in part two.